I see you. Hey everyone and welcome back. Today we are going to be back on everyone's uh, favorite mess, I guess. Pickle the bus. My 1958 press bumper panel bus, for those of you who don't know. There is a playlist on the channel for this bus. And now that we've kind of got everything moved, move the rover over. It's running great. Move over rover. Set him in a different bay or set her in a different bay over here. And I've flip flopped some tent trailers and things for winter projects. So I've got those kind of moved where I can get to them. When we left off, I had repaired this back corner. Made that piece to patch in the frame there. Let me squeak back behind it. So we put that piece in. And we made this piece down here. Fits it to right up there. Now we just need to kind of trim where that will go here. I need to put some bracing in here so we can start working our way up this way. We're going to use this piece right now. On both sides it's in uh, decent shape. I say decent in air quotes because uh, that's a relative term on this bus. But it is still welded at a couple points to the floor. So we're going to leave that one alone for now. And we'll work our way this way. And where the bus is mounted to the rotisserie is in pretty rough shape, as you can see from right there. So I have a plan in place for that. You'll get to see if you hang with me long enough. And I'm planning to work kind of from the front back towards the rotisserie mount and from good metal this way towards the rotisserie mount. And then you'll see what I have in mind uh, to fix this mess because it's kind of important and critical that that point is solid because that is where your front wheels hook on so we kind of want to make sure we're good to go there so let me go get the welder we'll trim this up we're gonna cut this guy off i've marked where i think that needs to go i'm gonna cut it just a little bit proud and then we'll get that piece welded in back on the torsion tube and we'll get it welded in here on the frame and keep working our way uh, on this little project today. I do want to kind of pull down, if I get a chance today, I put up top here on the shelf, uh, the bumpers are up there. I'd kind of like to pull down that front bumper and bang around on it a little bit and see if we can get some of those dents out uh, just to see how difficult that's going to be and kind of get in mind if I uh, need to replace those or not. I don't think I'm going to. I think they'll be just fine. They're a little bit soft. The thing about press bumper buses, the uh, press bumper was never meant to be <laughs> to be a collision deterrent because they are pretty soft. So let me, uh, let me go grab the welder and we'll get started on this guy today. I'm going to try and keep you out of harm's way. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see there, but We'll go for it. I'm going to try to cut just on the other side of this weld mark. Cut out. 
out. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And just clean that up a little bit with the flapper disc and then we should be ready. I went ahead and cut our uh, other piece that's going in here. Took it over to the bandsaw and I cut that. So clean that up and we should be ready to put that piece in. Man, I say it every time. I do not know how I survived without a plasma cutter all those years. I would have had to cut that with a cutoff wheel and that would just take forever. Got a little bit of an issue. I got everything all cleaned up, ready to weld in. Just need to tap it with a hammer to get it lined up down there. But in order for this to kind of sit up where it needs to go, this piece here, it's kind of hard to show, but this piece here gets in the way. So we gotta put a jack on it and shove that sucker back. It's got a saggy butt. So we gotta brace it against, uh, the last time I did the same thing down here, brace it against the rotisserie and just put a high lift jack and jack that guy out of our way so we can get this one straight. Yeah, that's how, that's how bad this whole bus is. <laughs> Isn't it great? So this is kind of one of those tools you don't use very much until you have one. And then you find all kinds of uses for it. So it's basically like a fancy bumper jack, if you want to call it fancy. It's pretty straightforward. And we're going to use it to expand an area. So you have all these nice little slots that allow you to adjust where that thing goes and where that bottom jack point goes. Hopefully you can see there it's not too rattly once I get this going here. I'll come handhold you once I get it all set up. Let's see. I'm gonna find a spot where I'm not gonna crush any tubing if I can help it. There. Come on. I know you want to come down. There we go. Okay. You gonna work there? I'd like to go a little bit higher, but I don't know if I can. That's gonna get us probably right there. Okay, we're gonna go one crank. <laughs> Sounds great, doesn't it? Or are we gonna get one crank? Just one click. That's all I need. Come on. Got it. So you can see with the jack in there, that is uh, what we were allowed or able to get as far as a gap is concerned. That'll give me plenty to work with. It'll allow me to put that where it's supposed to be, this frame piece. And thankfully, these two points here are still intact uh, because the back end or the butt end of this bus is really saggy. So we're, we're, we're fixing that. We're patching it up. Giving it a, a butt lift. I just thought I would uh, show the fitment real quick. You can see we are snug as a bug or a bus in a rug, I guess. And we're super tight back here, which is what I want. So when I hammer that down, we are going to be very, very tight, snug fit. So it, it's given me just a little bit of tension fit too, which is good. That's what I want. I think that's about as close a fit as I'm going to get. There's a little bit of a gap right there where my thumb is. For a homemade piece, not working with any fancy equipment, I think that's probably about as close a fit as we're going to get. There's not very, very much of a gap here, which is nice. 
Uh, got my holes drilled here and on top. So I think we're ready. I need to tap the, with a hammer just a little bit, tap that side up a little bit. I think we're good. Unfortunately, everything I keep putting behind me, <laughs> first I had the Land Rover parked there, and now I have the Higgins, uh, AJ Higgins trailer parked here, and it is aluminum, so I can't stick my tripod <laughs> on anything for you to see. So I'm going to try setting you up just back here, just uh, not magnetized to anything, and we'll see how that goes. Can you see from there? Yeah, we'll hope so. I'll try and stay out of your way. I'm gonna go for this piece first. And then once I get that in, I'm gonna take the hammer and tap this back down a little bit. I've kinda got this piece where I want it, where I need it. I'm gonna have to bring you back. I gotta go get a uh, pair of ice to pull my ground plant. He is a creaking. Make sure I didn't leave any racks down there. move up the, the torsion tube and we'll get that side welded in and I'll bring you back. We haven't done all that much and it's starting to tick so I'm gonna uh, try and turn the camera on and see if you can hear some of that where it's starting to, to tick. You, you know what I mean if you've done this kind of thing before. I, I think that's kind of cool when it starts to settle and you hear that going on. Kind of kind of creepy all at the same time. You know I've got this whole bus leaning towards me. So if he goes, he goes on me. Jump back quick, right? <laughs> Let the pole catch it? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna carry on and see if you can hear some of that. It's pretty cool. Set you down here, maybe. I don't wanna put you up there because I'm afraid I'll bump you too much. Plus you'll get sparks in your eyes. We don't want that, we don't want sparks in your eyes. Can you see from there? Okay, put your helmet on. Sorry about that, I had to go get a light. Couldn't see what I was doing. And now that light's probably glaring right at you, but I can't see, so gotta have it. That torsion tube is just enough uh, thicker metal. The pause I have to do on it is a lot longer than Normally I kind of work in a cursive, I guess it's an E, uh, but I'm having to pause, kind of hold up on that torsion tube a little bit, because I don't want to set my welder too high, because it'll blow through my, my frame piece. I'm trying 
trying to hold the pool when I kind of get it going. I'm trying to kind of hold it up against the tube as much as I can. Not be able to hear it over the welder. Tick, tick, tick. I love that sound. <laughs> you hear it back there? All right, let me finish that up and I will uh, I'll bring you back when we've got that piece in there and we'll take a look and see uh, how bad of a job I did. This is really hard to weld to back here. It's hard to get to. It's looking okay though. So I'll carry on and bring you back here in a sec. Gotta slow down, made up a grease fire. <laughs> All the grease inside the torsion tube. So we'll let that cool off for a second and we'll get back at it. Put you back here so you can see it. When, a, when the fire starts, you tell me, okay? It's really hot in there. There's a song about that once, wasn't there? It's getting hot in here. Get right in that tight spot where I can't get very well. Yeah, there she's billowing out. <laughs> Oh, the smell of burning oil. Mmm. Down in there. I'm trying to stay out of your way, but that's kind of hard to do. Let me move you. How about right there? Probably still going to be blocking you. Trying to close that in really well, make sure there's no gap. Try to keep as much water out of there as I can. Uh, for those of you who are going to say something, I did spray both uh, the frame piece on the bus and the piece I put in with that weld through primer. I don't know if that's going to help us out or not, but maybe it'll prevent rust from happening. You can hear it ticking now. Let the fan on the welder run just a second here. Alright, so that is in all the way through the bottom. I just need to come up on the top. I think we've burned all of our grease out now. So I just need to come up and kind of go as far around there as I can. And then as on this piece, I'll get you down there where you can see. Right down. Right down here. Ah, you can't see anything. Right down there. I'm going to try and tack that a couple times. I had trouble getting in that area the last time. So once we've got it attached to the torsion tube, I'm not fearful that the bus is going to fall apart or anything. We'll get a couple tacks there. And then at some point, I'm going to have to flip this thing to where I can get to that. And then the upper uh, drilled through points up there. What am I trying to say? Plug welds are uh, going to have to be done after the floor is cut out of the inside of the bus. And that, that top section right there too. I don't think I can get that. Yeah, I might be able to get it a little bit on this side. Alright, let's finish that up and then we'll cut our high lift jack loose and see how far he goes kaboom. Ah, oh, 
I quit just as I turned on the camera. Some more growing pains I was hoping you could hear. Anyway, that's all in. So let's drop this down and see what we get. All right, so I know it's really blurry at the top of your screen, but I'm gonna let this jack off and we're gonna see how far she goes. I gotta, I gotta squeeze back on you just a little bit to get the jack to release. I have to hit that with a hammer. Where is my hammer? There it is. It's gonna get a little bit bumpy. Okay. Should be back down flush on our newly patched piece. Yeah? No? Can I get that out of there? There we go. Looks like it's resting right where it's supposed to be, doesn't it? Like a glove. Focus. Come on, baby. There we go. It's perfect. Right where it's supposed to go. Awesome. I'm going to call that a win. Now let's jump up here and see what kind of awesomeness we're going to get into up here. So I think I'm going to start with cutting this piece off. Do I want to make my supports now? Do I want to see what we're getting into? Yep, let's just cut a little short one and go from here to this uh, post here. I don't think we'll need it, but I'd rather do it now. And then we can feel pretty safe about cutting this piece out. So let me go measure that distance there. We'll cut a little short piece to fit in there just to kind of band-aid this whole mess that we got going on here because this big U-channel is running the full length, <laughs> the full length of the front of the bus. Yeah, so let me go get a brace piece and then we can start kind of cutting some of this garbage out. I went through on this piece and where it kind of was rolled, it kind of was rolled here. I straightened out this with a pair of pliers and then hit this top part with the sledge and tried to get that as straight as I can. It looks pretty good. So I think we're going to go with that. I've cut my little piece to go in here. And ground spot on the frame where we can brace that back. I might want to move back just a hair because we're going to have to, oops, sorry, might want to move back just a hair because we're going to have to get into this. Cut that out. I don't want to be blocking my, my way here. Keep it as close as I can with the ability to get in there to get all those boogers out of there. Holy cow. All right, let's get this piece welded in and grind the edges of it and tap that in there. And we should be in pretty good shape up there. Well, as you saw there, I went ahead and welded another brace in. I ground all the metal on this original frame back and it's good there and I hit with a hammer all the way up. We are good until we pretty much hit, I'll show you where I'm, hit about right here and actually it it's, feels pretty good right there. Uh, on the back side, however, you can see where my finger is in that crack there, it's not so good. So we'll go ahead and cut out this once we get to that point. But to right here, we are good. So this is what we're gonna focus on now. Careful with that, that's hot. When you put your hand on that, that is hot. <laughs> I peeled back, uh, there was some of this stuff on there and it tends to catch on fire, I've learned. So I peeled back 
a lot of that. I'm going to work up in here just a little bit because we're probably going to get some sparks. We don't need that bead, do we? Probably going to get some sparks up in here and I don't want this to, stuff to catch on fire. So we'll, I'll peel all of that back and then we'll get the plasma cutter and start just kind of shaving this off. Yeah, that, that actually looks a lot better. There's original seam seal up here from the factory. That's pretty cool. How stuff like that's arrived on this truck or bus, it's just kind of hard to imagine being that everything else is in such terrible condition. I want to take the plasma cutter and kind of shoot the flame or shoot it so it's aimed up away from that and just start kind of cutting this away. But the first places I'm going to start is here and on the other side of that. And then we'll just start cutting it away a layer at a time. It's like an onion. We're just going to peel it back a layer at a time. See what kind of damage we can do or what kind of damage they did. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. So I'm just working my way back, started on this end. I've worked a little bit down here, but I just wedged a screwdriver in and then I kind of just plasma cut the hot spots or where it was welded before. It's working pretty well. I'm staying out of the, the frame underneath, so pretty, pretty happy with how that's working off. Look at that under there, though. <laughs> oh my goodness. It makes me laugh, because you either laugh or cry, but it's quite comical. So I'll just keep at it, and we'll keep prying that back, and we'll get this piece off and take a look at the, at the goodness that's underneath. Wow. Let's take a look at that. <laughs> wow. That's had four or five patches on it, it looks like. And I knew I was smelling that burning rubber that stuff that's on there. That stuff is gross. Look how peeled up. That frame is right there. <laughs> yeah. That's lovely, huh? I have a feeling the further we dig into that, the more of it is going to fall apart. Holy cow. Yeah, so I may want to brace up my braces just a little bit more tough than a few tack welds. Let me shut the plasma cutter off here. Any grand. Looks like they just bonded over or something on that patch there. Can't tell what that is. Is that metal? I guess it is. Was there something there on a bus that was welded? I bet there was. That's where that tube came down. Yeah. Okay. I'm oriented now. That still feels pretty good. Let me, uh, that actually still feels pretty good right there. How? I don't know. Not here, though. Yeah, you can hear the sound change. Let me scrape that off and see, we'll see what we're dealing with right there. Well, that is a winner, winner chicken dinner, if I ever saw one. How about that? 
I've kind of gone around with the Sharpie as I'm laughing and uh, trying to kind of figure out what I want to do here. The metal up here is good. Uh, this is kind of pitted right here, but I took a grinder to it. It's good metal. I don't think I'm going to have anything to worry about there. And then down here is good, really until about right there. And I've cut, made a line to cut past that. This is boxed in on the back from the factory. You can see they've put their box in, whoever had it before me, but the factory box in is there. So all of this will get reinforced or boxed in. Uh, I am going to build this piece and I'm going to try to make it past, so my this line here where my finger is, try to make it this direction past. If I can retain this little bend, that would be great. And it is in pretty decent shape there. It starts to kind of pull up right after that, where it has rotted away and started to pull the top part of the frame up. So if I can cut there, kind of hammer that back down, I think we'll be okay. But dear Lord, baby Jesus. <laughs> Man, I love how they just put a band-aid over it, you know, just if you cover it up, it's not there. So let me let me reach down and I'll grab the piece that was there. It's laying right there. And you know, the amazing thing is if you put a big enough band-aid on it, you don't see it, see? All went away. It's just like magic. Except for this, you know, big gaping wound that's down here. But yeah, I mean See the hole? Now you don't. Wow. And you know, this this was just causing everything to kind of collect. There was sand up in here because it created that little pocket. Just collected moisture up there. Surprised it didn't rot out the top part. So yeah, patch her up. Wow, throw that in the pile. So next time we'll start on that, I'll start cutting and we'll fabricate that piece there. I probably will go in and weld my braces uh, <laughs> a little bit more secure now that I see uh, kind of what we're dealing with. I'm going to leave the U-channel in. It's not touching anything now. We can work around it. Uh, that adds just a little bit of structure for us. So we'll leave that in for now rather than cutting it out. There is a piece that goes in right here that we'll have to uh, probably tweak and modify slightly to get it in there, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. My big concern is getting these two main frame rails done. I want to work on that tonight, but I also want to work on, there's a bumper up there. I don't know if you can see it or not. Right there. I want to reach up and grab that and see if we can't kind of hammer that out so that I can start looking for one at a swap meet if I think I need one. Uh, good luck with that because it's a press bumper. So we're going to try to do everything we can to save it. So here's kind of what we're dealing with. Not exactly a perfect specimen, but press bumpers are hard to come by, and I really would like to use the one we got. So, let's see what we can do. Maybe nothing, but I'm willing to give it a try. Well, I've just been at it for a couple of minutes, and I've been working this outer line here. And it's moving pretty easily. Had a pretty boogered up spot. I'll try and put a picture in here of where that was. I should have filmed it. I'll film a little bit of it, but it's just kind of annoying. He's just beating with a hammer. Kind of boring stuff, but uh, these, where it mounts to the bumper bracket, were pulled through on both sides. I have hammered with a sledge on this side. I need to go on that. We gotta work this side over here. And it's starting to kind of take its shape back. I'm just working that lip along the edge. I'm using a train piece of section of train track. And this is a uh, three pound sledge. And then I have uh, some junk dollies, little hand dollies and my two hammers. And I'm working against the concrete, against the uh, wooden sawhorse and against the train track. It's working out pretty well. So like when you have something like this that you want to poke it back out, I'm hitting it from the inside against the wood so that it's not getting the dents of the concrete in it. It's working out pretty well. Uh, 
if it was a, a softer metal, I would use a sandbag, but this is a little bit heavier duty metal. I wasn't even sure I could move it, but it's actually moving pretty easy. I'll feel it tomorrow, but, and apparently they are seamed right in the middle. You can see the weld. So I learn something new every day. So I'm going to keep at it and I will uh, try to show you a little bit of that, but I'll, I'll bring you back when we kind of get the other side banged out. We'll see if we can get this kind of warpy bow thing out of the middle too because that should not be flat that should curve with the curvature of the bus but i think we get that other ribbon line on the side there because see here we're we're pinched out i think once we get that in it'll kind of start to take shape it's already doing a lot better we got a little bit of a twist going on here but again that place right there is causing us a lot of grief so if we can bend that around i think these are salvageable Yes! starting to go the right way because we're getting a little crinkle right here and here so it was it was flattened kind of like this way and then as it's coming this way somewhere it has to give so I had this kind of straightened out and it's starting to crinkle it up so that means we're going the right way we can fix the little crinkle here in a second it's starting to look like something. Yeah, let me work on that just a little bit longer and we'll go uh, put it in front of the bus and see what it looks like. Well, folks, after about 30 minutes of kind of just working on that. I'm pretty happy with that. Got a little bit of a twist going on here, you can see. And that's that side that was really crumpled right there. So I think once we kind of work that out, that is a runnable bumper. I think that'll work just fine, don't you? I think it does need just maybe a little bit more curve right in the middle. It's probably going to fall while I'm talking. It's barely balanced up there, but it looks so much better than it did before. Wow. That's going to do just fine. Awesome. Haha. <laughs> yeah, I think that is totally, totally, totally workable. And just a little bit more work, and that one is uh, ready to go. The next time you see this old bus, we'll be uh, <laughs> repairing the band-aid we just ripped off. Your mom always said if you rip the band-aid off quick, it doesn't hurt. Uh, well, we certainly don't rip any band-aids off quick in this project, and they hurt a lot. So here's what we'll be dealing with the next time you see this old boy. So until then, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for being here. I'm stuck in my spot here. Thanks for being here. And we'll see you on the next one. Crusty goodness. Bye, everybody. Uh-huh. Somebody got electrified. <laughs>